welcome back to International Scale Modeler. Today we've got a bit of a beauty for our review. It is the amazing new Tamiya 132. This is the F4U1 um, Corsair birdcage and uh, I'm sure it'll be the first of several different renditions for Tamiya. Uh, this looks like to be an awesome kit um, and I can't wait to get my hands on it to have a look, quick look through here and show you guys what's involved in it. So without further ado, here's the review. But this is the uh, Tamiya 132 Vought F4U 1 Corsair birdcage um, and this is hopefully going to be an awesome kit. There's a little bit of the box art for you. Okay, uh, so a lovely picture. Uh, it's a stonking looking uh, aircraft, it really is. Uh, just because of these dipped wings, it's a lot like a Stuka. Um, but uh, on the box itself we have a, a very intriguing clear engine cowling there so um, it looks like plenty of options included in the box um, on the outside you also have a couple of scheme de uh, details so a light blue one there and a slightly darker one and on the other side we have uh, some pictures of a, a model that obviously someone at Tamiya has made up um, and it looks uh, it's a very clean model uh, it looks like there's a figure in there as well. You can see how the cockpit builds up and the engine looks extremely well detailed um, and very tidy indeed. There's also a picture of some of the extras in the box. It looks like some masks, some rubber wheels and some photo etch, which we shall get into. Uh, so let's have a quick look in the box. Um, Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this out, as you can see it's presented quite nicely, but it is all loose. So I'm going to take it all out, and then we can go through it sprue by sprue. Um, right, okay. Oh my god, there's lots of it. Right, so let's start off with the sprues that are on the top. Now the first sprue that was there is this little um, beauty, which is a, um, a clear part sprue. Uh, now this is one clear part sprue by the looks of it, not the clear part sprue. Uh, what I like about this, having a look at this, every single uh, bag is individually wrapped. Unfortunately, it's done with staples though. Um, and I've seen these scrape cockpits before and everything, so I'm going to be very careful getting these out. Uh, but on here, this is uh, obviously this is done so that um, this has been done so that you can uh, build the engines up and see inside if you want to. So you could you could have the whole front cowling um, completely uh, see through, although it is slightly opaque. Um, and uh, so you could see, really do go to town on the engine if you want um, and see a picture of it and uh, so you, it's not all covered so it's actually worth doing so that's an option I wouldn't imagine that's it's not a case of you having to do that but as you can see the clear parts they're very opaque so you can see they're quite um, still see-through though very clear and crisp um, they look uh, absolutely awesome uh, these Tamiya 132 kits are meant to be the dog's danglies. This is the first one I've had. I haven't actually had a look at the other ones. Uh, so uh, there's a little note inside here as well. It says painting transparent parts. Apply a thick coat of clear TS13 which is Tamiya's uh, spray paint. Um, so uh, it's just a case of you obviously got your own clear and everything like that. Um, but uh, So that's sprue one and uh, as you can see it gives you a picture of here what it should look like when it's together. So you can see the engine in there. Not fully, I've got to say it's not crystal clear because obviously it's it's got that opaqueness to it. So um, it will, but you will see the workings of the engine and everything, which is a bit different. It's a bit, a bit different to the norm. Right, uh, another sprue. As I say, I might take my time with opening these up because I just want to make sure that I don't scratch the plastic. Uh, now this is the, the main fuselage, uh, the engraving on there is 
very light indeed. I mean, it's there's a ton of it. I mean, the the amounts of if you've seen my review of the um, Eduard Spitfire, you'll know how impressed with that I was with the um, with the rivet work and everything on there. Um, but it's the same on here. There's tons and tons of very very light uh, that will show up only if you're doing a thin wash. I doubt if this will even pick it up. It's so faint. Work an angle for you. But it really is very, very faint indeed. And the whole fuselage is covered in it. Um, <clears throat> hopefully that's picked some of it up for you. Uh, now inside the fuselage, as you can see, that's uh, the rear. There's a lot of detail work as well. See, that's where the copper's going to be. Um, but uh, the plastic itself, it's, it's not rock hard, it's reasonably soft. I would imagine it's very easy to work with. Uh, there's no hint of flash or um, burrs or anything anywhere on here. And if it is anything like the, the previous 132 kits, it will literally just snap together. Um, and, uh, you know, watching other videos and things like that, half the time the glue isn't even needed. So, um, but uh, there's things like there's some, some grills on there. Everything's got detail on it. Everything in, in completely. Uh, so let's have a look. The next sprue is quite a few to get through here, so I don't want to leave it too long for you. And this is quite a large sprue. The box itself is quite large as well. Um, I've got to say, I thought it'd be packed a little bit more tightly. Uh, everything's quite loose in there, which is reasonably good. Although that does give you room for for damage. Damage uh, on here, you've got the wings, the upper and the lower sections of the wings, and uh, the parts where they attach to the fuselage. Again, level of detail. Um, I'm really hoping that the camera's going to pick some of this up because the rivet work is stunning. Um, there's so much, so much of it. It really is. That whole panel, if this isn't picking it up, it would be a shame. But that whole panel is completely covered in holes and rivets and, and things like that. Uh, completely. And you've then got uh, the wings themselves. Again, a lot more detail. Again, I don't, I'm not sure if it's picking up. I really can't see, sorry. Uh, but a lot of detail again uh, and everything looks absolutely smashing I would say there's not a hint of flash burrs anything like that um, and I'm really looking forward to getting this together because it's uh, I know Paul's on at me because he wants me to send it to him so he can do it um, but uh, I'm not too sure after looking at it I think I might have to have a crack at it sorry mate <laughs> um, but uh, Let's have a look in here. We've got um, you've got the uh, main support for the wings there. Lots of odds and sods. Uh, it looks like you've got a uh, that looks, looks like the instrument panel uh, part there, um, which is totally flat. So I would imagine it's going to give you some stuff to put on it. Things like this. I mean, the detail here, as you can see, inside. Okay, inside here. Very, very good indeed. Um, the all the pictures you see of this, uh, the, the bird's quite weathered. Um, if I remember rightly, I think it's a naval plane, so it, they do tend to get battered. Uh, but the the level of rivet detail on every piece is even around every panel line on there has got you know, lined with rivets, and uh, they're so small and faint that uh, I mean, even to the naked eye, you've got to kind of twist it to see it. But uh, very impressive indeed. Uh, I know I don't think anyone I've heard any bad things at all about the uh, 132 releases previously from Tamiya. Uh, everyone says just how wonderful they actually are. So I can't imagine this being any different whatsoever, as it's been the third one in the series. Uh, again, uh, a lot of detail on every single piece. It looks like you can have wings up or wings down version. Um, you can see here you've got the uh, wing ends and there's a scope to add, add bits to that as well. Again, detailing, excellent. But uh, everywhere else, I mean, it's just even all the, um, all the very fine, thin mouldings like this here. Uh, now, usually, the majority of kits, 95% of all kits, 
you'll have a seam line running down there which you have to scrape with a with a, um, a scalpel now that's pretty much indicative of all models you literally have to do that all the time there is no hint of a seam line on there at all um, I'm just trying to see if I can feel one I think there is a very very slight one um, how much work it would need I don't think it need anything actually I can't actually feel it it's, I can just about see something there but I can't feel it but uh, closer inspection will tell but again very impressive if that's the case now here we've got the engine radials And the level of detail again is top notch, very, very fine. I mean, everything really, I mean, as I'm sure you're aware, is clean and crisp and there's, there's nothing faint or soft or, you know, sometimes you get some soft mouldings and you think to yourself, oh, it just doesn't look quite right. You see, it looks out of scale. I mean, you've got everything on there. Yeah, I mean, I can't see that you'd need some photo etch. You do have some exhausts on there, if you can see, which are, will probably need drilling out, um, which are going to be a bit delicate considering the shape of them. It's going to be very hard to grip them, but they will definitely need drilling out to give them a bit more life. Uh, always a big fan of drilling exhausts. I mean, it can make a big, big difference to a, uh, an aircraft, and in my opinion, my humble, humble, humble opinion. Uh, you have a, a different type of sealed bag on this one. It's a different type of plastic, it's a very thin plastic compared to the others. Uh, you've got the uh, instrument bezels there. And they're very, again, very faint. Obviously, that's got to stick on top of the other bit that we saw just a second ago uh, with some decals underneath. Um, and there's a bit of a frame around the pedals. Again, good rivet detail on there as well, very faint very well moulded um, and uh, I do apologise Paul but I am actually getting quite excited about this I wasn't really that excited about getting it but now I've got it and I'm playing with it um, sorry mate this is uh, this is going to stay on my bench I'm afraid um, now you have the other sprue which is the mirror sprue of uh, the first one that we saw you've got the clear the clear cowling and you've got a mirror sprue of the uh, normal styrene um, cowling. Again, what I like about these circular bits, they're all one piece. When they're two piece, they're an absolute nightmare. Um, but uh, I would imagine uh, there would be a way of opening this up here just so you can have the cowling open a bit. If not, there might be another piece somewhere where it's already done for you, and we shall see. Moving on swiftly. Uh, we have here all the ailerons, uh, the rudder, tail rudder, um, tail plate, tail wings. I mean, everything is excellent level of detail. I mean, there's nothing to fault at all with this. And as I say, it's really rare that you get a kit where it has no burring and no um, mould. I mean, there's, there's 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 no flash even on the sprue. There's no, um, I mean, even the sprues itself, it has got a, a mould line on it. But again, that's minimal, uh, and there's no burring on the on the on the sprue frame itself, which is uh, just testament to how what good a quality this really is. But there's uh, a lot of odds and sods on here. I mean, this is a lot of framework. I, I would imagine in the cockpit. Um, there's the uh, the hook, um, rods. Very very fine detail here. Again. This stuff, stuff like this, which is extra thin, um, which would normally, you know, have that burr on there. Nothing at all, not a hint of it. Um, and the quality throughout is excellent. I mean, as you come to, there's a set of wheels there, and they're in two pieces. Not a fan of two-piece wheels, I've got to say. Um, but uh, as you can see, very highly detailed, all up together and everything. So very nice indeed. Okay, next sprue. And this looks like again more cockpit stuff. How this builds up. Um, the level of detail on the cockpit is excellent. Uh, there's going to be a lot you can pick out there. 
the control surfaces and everything as you can see uh, again more riveting again, it's just, just good detail all over there's nowhere I mean you've got some more instrument surfaces there and with some holes in so again I don't know if there's a photo etch um, instrument dials and everything I would imagine there are but this is all cockpit work I mean there's a good lever set and everything here um, I mean the hose is the hose is uh, there's a hose there with some good level of detail on as you'll see so I mean overall I mean I think this is you know it's going to be every single sheet uh, is going to be good quality and that's why I don't like staples there you go and again it's the uh, the belly of the fuselage on the underside again it's it's let's see if it's focus let's see if I can get this right in for you just so you can see the level of Uh, stud work and things like that on there it's excellent um, but uh, big big word of warning uh, do not flood it with paint I think uh, I've started using um, the AO surface primer on pretty much everything at the moment but I'm not going to use that on this uh, or the Eduard Spitfire either because I think this will be too thick um, I think I'll go go to uh, an Alclad. I think I'll use the Alclad um, stuff, which is meant to be really, really fine. Uh, it's something that Paul's told me about. Uh, so I, 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 I just think that if you get, if you use VAO on that, it's going to flood it, and you're going to lose half of that detail. In fact, I'm pretty sure you're going to do that. Um, right, uh, another bag with another two screws on. This has got the props in. And there's, there's two sprues in there, and they're both mirror images of each other. Uh, you've got the hub, a wheel hub there. Uh, nice alloys. 16 inch rim, pump your, pimp your ride. Um, the props themselves, uh, again, just going to see if they have this is, this is the final bit. No burring whatsoever. There's no, you're not going to have to do any work at all on those props. They're absolutely. Beautiful, smooth as a baby's bum. Nothing at all needed on those. Um, and again, it's just detail, detail, detail everywhere on this. Everywhere you look, it's just detail. Lots and lots and lots of it. So you, you're going to have to really take care with your painting though. Um, you really can't flood it or anything like that. You really have to gonna take care with it because it's literally light passes. Uh, I light in a few passes. Uh, you've got the stand. Um, now, this is like the other stands that come with the uh, Mustang. Uh, I believe that uh, it's interchangeable, which means that you can have the wheels down, wheels up. Uh, you can have this on the stand, off the stand, um, and it's not a um, hard to do. It's quite easy to do because it's interchangeable, and the parts are made so that you can put the wheel wells up and put the wheels up put the wheels down slot them in um, there'll be a screwdriver somewhere yep there is um, and the, you can you can you know have it in several configurations without having to model it into one uh, uh, you know end position you can have it in several positions itself uh, the figure itself um, now Tamiya figures are usually quite good and this is no exception there's two figures here one there's a seated pilot with a, uh, an excellent level of detail on there uh, I do like Tamiya figures they tend to be the only figures that I've ever made for a kit um, and then you've got the standing standing figure there as well and again good level of detail uh, the heads are excellent the heads do have a mould line on them though I've got to say that's the first one I've seen as you can see just running down the sides there so that will need a little bit of work but uh, only with the scalpel but apart from that, excellent detail, um, and you can you've got a choice of two, uh, which is good as well. So it depends how you want to, again to configure it. You could do both, and you could change the configuration each time. Uh, there's a little bag here, and in here we have 
Uh, just get this out so you can have a look. I don't want to. Ah, a handy little bag. Right, in here we have uh, a screw and a nut and a couple of uh, little pins. I don't want to get them out of the bag really. A couple of little pins in there, a screw and a nut. Now, the screw and a nut I'm sure will be something to do with the stand. And the pins, I would imagine, will be something to do with the ailerons so that you can have them in uh, a couple of different positions instead of again being fixed. I think that's what happened on the Mustang, if I remember rightly. Uh, you get a little uh, Phillips crosshead screwdriver and you get two wheels and the wheels are absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm a fan of rubber wheels because you, you can't get more natural look than the natural look. Um, and uh, they'll probably need just a little bit of scuffing. The mould line, let me just have a quick look. There is a mould line on there but it is very, very minimal. So I would imagine it's not going to take too much work with a scalpel to get rid of that either. Um, I know they're on a black background, but that's the wheels. As you can see, lovely set of grips on there and everything. So, all very nice indeed. Uh, so, that's another little extras bag. We put pop that in there. We've also got the clear sprue. And this is for the cockpit and all the other odds and sods. And you've got the instrument, uh, there is an inch clear instrument bezel there as well. So I would imagine that, uh, and that's got raised on one side, so yeah, that's going to go through. So I would imagine you've either got decals or photo etch to go underneath that. Um, but as you can see there, uh, the glass itself is crystal clear. It's absolutely beautiful. No warpage, no bending, you know, the... the uh, picture the, the the lines on the model don't change at all so it's extremely well molded uh, excellent level of detail on there as well as you can see extremely clear lovely glass and that's going to give you a lot to see in that cockpit I mean even though it doesn't look like there's a lot there um, you know that's big enough that whatever you do in the cockpit is going to look you're going to be able to see it um, so all your efforts are will not be wasted Right, now there is some photo etch and that is attached to one of the things on a box quite well. So let's have a look at the photo etch. This looks like there's two frets in here. Okay, we have uh, some grills um, and some other odds and sods that look absolutely beautiful. Okay, let's get them out so you can have a look. That's a nice weight as well. It's not too thin. It's yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. They really look nice. So that's going to look awesome when they're all, when it's all on there and painted. We've also got another fret here with the seat belts, um, and the seat belts look like they're coloured. Uh, there's no no photo etch for the uh, instrument panel or anything like that. Um, lots of other surfaces and, and things, um, but I haven't done, I think they're slightly uh, coloured those seat belts. they're a good size as well which is nice, uh, so um, they're not going to be too hard to bend and, and manipulate uh, for you, but there's two sets there. Right. You'll have to excuse me there, um, I've run out of space on the camera so I had to delete a couple of the older movies. Anyway, so that's the seat belts and the photo etch, um, all very nice indeed, let's just pop that over there. Uh, now we've got, uh, let's have a look here, there's the decals, um, we've got a, a paint mask and a sticker for the stand I would imagine, but as you can see there's the paint mask and the sticker, okay, um, that'll be for the stand I'm sure. The decals themselves, are quite large, there's not many of them, and it looks like, oh yes, there's two sheets, there you go, okay, decals themselves, look, let's have a small sheet, all the writing is readable, they're quite flat, um, and these are 
internal decals and lots of the outside, um, obviously Japanese shot down flags, things like that, walkway uh, markers, uh, all very good and in register, very nice to see. I'm not too sure about this instrument dial though, it's looking like there aren't um, any instrument, colour instrument, um, anything for it. So uh, I don't know if you're going to put them yourself, which is a bit funny really for a 132. I may have missed something, but I don't think so. Uh, and then you've got the large decals. Now these are not as flat as the other ones. These are a little bit shinier. And as you can see, quite a few there. And again, all in register. Very nice indeed. Now, I don't know any, if anyone else like me has had experience of Tamiya decals, but I've not had a good experience with Tamiya decals yet. Um, on every model that I've done, uh, the decals, at least one of the decals is just split or cracked. Um, now, I don't know if that's me or, or anything, but it's on every Tamiya model that I've done. So, I'm not a great huge fan of Tamiya decals, and I will probably, if I'm going to spend time and effort on this, I will probably say to myself, right, I'm going to go and spend a, a little bit extra, because uh, I saved a bit of money getting this from Hong Kong. Um, I'm going to uh, spend a little bit extra and maybe get an extra, uh, uh, an aftermarket set of decals for it, a good set, because uh, I just don't want to do all that work on a big plane where your decals are really going to be noticeable and then something happens to them. Uh, you also get this. Um, now there's another bag full of odds and sods. Uh, this is all the paperwork. And uh, let's see what we've got in here. Right. Okay, we have a little booklet. And this is a colour booklet, glossy, very um, magazine like. And it has some pictures, even a picture of the prototype of the Corsair there, um, as you can see. No markers or nothing, just a plain aircraft. And this is the uh, F4U1, so this is the first uh, rendition. Um, and there's several with different canopies uh, and everything. It says half of it's in, in uh, Chinese, I would imagine, and the other, or Japanese, and the other half is in English. So it's quite a nice history on it and going through all the different marks uh, right up to the 5N and everything which I've got. I've got a, a small version of that. Um, and then you've got um, the history of all the different um, all the different marks again. This is the F401, so that's that one. Um, and again, as you're going on through, there's a slight plan and it tells you what bits and bobs are on the on the aircraft. Going on through, it gives you some pictures, how the legs fold away, how they, uh, you know, pictures of the engine, uh, loads of reference shots at the end. Uh, you've got some black and white ones there, and then you've got some full colour ones of one that's in, obviously in a museum somewhere. But as you can see, nice load of reference shots, which is going to help when you do your cockpit and things like that. It's always nice to have a photograph so you can get your bits of red in the right place and things like that. Um, you've got some exterior shots. Uh, a few of the, quite a few of the engine okay in the wings and you've got some more of the engine and the armament and uh, all the pipe work I think you can see all the different colors that the pipe works in something you might not have picked up on before so a very handy uh, little guide and a little history of the uh, the, the f4u there so I think that's that's a very nice little touch uh, you've then got the instructions now this is a this is a big old book, um, A4, it's not glossy, but it's a very, very nice tactile paper. It's very thick paper as well. Um, so that's going to be nice to, you know, as, as you guys well know, I'm a, whole, I'm a big believer of the whole experience. And I think, you know, good details, pages, instructions, things like that all add to the whole experience of building a model. Um, and uh, it gives you a list of the tools you need paints required and obviously all the paints are going to be in Tamiya I do have the whole range of Tamiya so as long as it's a Tamiya paint I've got it so it will be easy to stick with those there's quite a few paints required as you can see and a lot of that I mean for the bodywork I would imagine there's two or three tops and the rest is for all the internal stuff um, and it goes through tech tips tips on putting it together what the different symbols mean marking options 
Um, you got the US Navy VF-17, the Marine Corps VF VMF-213, and the Marine Corps VMF-215, uh, which are these ones here, these three here. So that's your choice. So I think you know before you do anything, you've got to make your choice which one I'm going to go for. The one on the cover is the VF-17, and there's two others. I don't. I really haven't done decided what I'm going to do yet. Um, and I think I'll have a look at a bit of history of each one and see which one I, I like the, the sound of the best. The instructions themselves, they build up very well. I mean, they've got everything in colours, so it's telling you to paint this before um, it goes together anymore. Um, as you can see, all obviously very logical. There are decals for the instruments. Uh, that's what it's saying on there. Uh, I didn't see them. Um, they were very black. Uh, unless I've got a dodgy set, uh, which I've been known to have before, but according to that, the decals on here should have dials on, marked, marked up with dials on and everything. So you've got this set here, which is the main set. We've also got this little set here. Okay, now that's saying that they should have dials and everything, and there's definitely nothing on there. They are just plain blank decal so I think I've got a dodgy set of decals there um, which is hurrah uh, unless they go on the opposite way and the color is on the other side on the reverse side um, because you've got those clear parts um, and that's the only thing I can think of that the color is not on this side but on the sticky side and you stick that to the let's have a look yeah, you stick that, ah yes, that's what it is. You stick the other side, that the sticky side, that you'd normally stick down on the bit that it goes inward, is actually pointing outward. So you're gonna put those on. So I would imagine the color is on the inside of those. So it's not a dodgy set of decals. Uh, decals, yeah, as you can see from here, the way that it goes together is you stick, that's the sticky side, and it goes on butts onto the, the clear piece that we saw, and then that connects to the the actual uh, instrument panel and the bezels and everything. Uh, so, okay, had me a little worry moment then, but everything is now fine again. Um, but uh, you can see the, the level of detail, how oh, that's gonna build up. Uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, and then working through, obviously, there's a lot of work for the cockpit. I mean, you've got pages, pages and pages just for the cockpit. You then get to the fuselage, uh, and again, tells you where to paint. So you've got lots of bits to put the fuselage. Before you even think about putting the pages, two pages of stuff you've got to insert into the, the fuselage before you even think about um, you know putting the cockpit and the tub in there. Um, and then once it goes together, it's only to build up the exhaust ports, things like that. And the exhaust ports look like they've got to go on quite early with the, along with the cowling here. So um, the engine must be inserted uh, underneath, I would have thought, because then you've got two whole pages of how to build up the engine. Make that three. Um, and uh, oh yeah, then it'll stick on the end there. Yeah. So that is going to look. I mean, you can see the level of detail on on that completed engine there. So uh, it's going to be quite a sight. It's almost worth saying. Well, yeah, I'm going to have the clear cowling. There might be a way of building up the clear cowling um, and interchanging the two. I'm, I don't know until I um, have a quick look through it, but. Uh, you know, it's um, it maybe maybe the option to switch the cowling over. Who knows? Uh, you can see there that you've got the two options uh, uh, on the stand and off. Um, and I think that uh, it tells you how to you know put the landing gear on and everything if you're having it that way. You've then got the uh, another set of it looks like a separate set of uh, section in the book just for the wings. And this is for extended wings. So I imagine there's another section for uh, wings up. And as you can see, it tells you how to build the wings up if you're going to have them extended and put them together. Again, there's a lot, a lot of work involved. I mean, this is one you really want to take your time with as well. Um, and you can have, I'm just having a look here. It looks like you can move the, the ailerons around. Then you put in the wheels together, the legs, how they insert. It doesn't say anything about gluing them in, so I don't know if you can take the like the can with the Mustang, uh, and uh, hopefully these will just clip in them, uh, the 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 wheel bay doors, 
we shall see um, when it builds up. I'll do a proper build on this uh, on the site. Uh, but as you can see here, things like this, this actually assembles by clipping in. Okay, it says there. So there's, uh, you don't have to glue everything in. And as I said, there's a lot usually a lot of things that are interchangeable on these. A um, bit about the tech tip, how to mask up the canopy, paint it, and everything. You know, again, again, we're still going with wings down, extended wings. I mean, this is the, all these pages we've gone through is just to put the wings together, um, and then you attach them to the to the main fuselage. Then you've got folded a folded wing section as well. Again, that runs you through if you want to have the wings folded. Um, uh, the main landing gear bay walls. You know, again, I'm sure that section builds up the same. And then obviously you get to the wings and uh, you're going to have a look at the folding section is going to be different and exposed, obviously. Uh, so, a lot of fun with this one. Um, I would imagine it looks quite nice with uh, folded wings as well. Uh, but again, instructions are very easy to understand. They're very clean, very precise. You're not going to have any um, issues or misunderstandings with it. I do like Tamiya details. They tend to be you know, usually very good. Um, and the way everything fits together doesn't seem to be a problem. Now it's saying do not glue the prop here now or the underside or the cowling around it. So I would imagine because it's saying that you may be able to interchange with the see-through stuff with the clear stuff in which case awesome because you can show it off and you one week you can have it that and the next week I'll have it a different way and obviously you've got the painting guys for the pilot, for the pilots um, and yes, yeah, the screws for the stand there, as you can see, uh, and everything, so you can have that on or off. But uh, the sprue maps, another thing I like about the sprue maps, they're all numbered, so you can take all the bits off and you're not going to lose bits, and you don't think, oh my god, what number's that? Especially with this, I don't think I'll take them off the sprues until I need them, because uh, I'll probably get lost halfway through. You've then got all the normal stencils, okay. Um, and then you've got your schemes. As I said, you've got the VMF 213, which is from Munda and the Solomon Islands, 1943. And you've got the 215 from the same place, Munda and Solomon Islands. And then you've got well, those two. I thought there were three schemes. Well, there were three schemes at the beginning. So um, I'll have a look at that. I think these are just the stencils and everything. And uh, there's a little bit more history about the, uh, the Corsair on the back, and there's a rear page. So very comprehensive instructions, uh, which you're going to need to follow, I'm sure. The last thing in the box is a nice little poster, and uh, that is the scheme that is on the box, as you can see, uh, and that's the VF17 uh, USS Bunker Hill. Uh, so that would be the ideal one uh, for the wings up, I would imagine, the wings folded. Um, yeah, because these these are Marine Corps planes, but this uh, is the only one that's assigned to a ship by the looks of it. So uh, these would be your wings down, um, extended, and these would be this would be your wing folded. Again, only three colours, as I thought, for the um, for the exterior. The rest of the paints are for the interior. But that's nice. Again, that's something that you, you know you can keep and put up on the wall or something if you wanted to. I do like things like this. It all, all adds to the experience. I mean, it's not a cheap kit. I think include. I got whacked for uh, customs, unfortunately, on this one. So uh, it came to about twenty quid more than I thought it would. I thought I got an absolute bargain when I bought it. It's something silly like seventy-five quid including postage, uh, which is, you know, really, really good. I think in the end it came to about 95 to 105 pounds. I haven't worked it out exactly yet, but that's still less than, than what you'll get it in the UK for in most of the shops. Um, but if you get it in the UK, you do have the, the backup and the, uh, the, um, the, you know, the following up from the, with the shops and everything, uh, if there's any problems with it at all. But uh, overall, I think it looks like an awesome kit. I'm hoping it's going to go together really well. From 
other people's comments on the previous Tamiya kits and everything, I don't think there's going to be a problem with fit whatsoever, even in the slightest. And if there is a problem with fit, it's going to be my fault and not the kit's fault. Um, but uh, apart from that, there's a lot of little goodies that come with it. Lots you can work with, lots to do, several options you can do. I'm sure the aftermarket guys will be out with a, a ton of stuff for this as well, with different markings and, and decals. I think I'm going to wait a little while uh, before I decide which one I'm going to build. I'm going to wait to see what the aftermarket comes up with in decal-wise and scheme-wise rather than anything else. I think it's got everything you need to build. The, the, I don't think you need to go aftermarket with any of the building stuff. The, the decals and the schemes, I would like to see what else is around there for, for all Corsair rather than the blue one. Um, and, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to building that. Sorry, Paul, you've, 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 you're out, mate. Uh, this is mine now. Uh, so anyway, that is the uh, brand new Tamiya 132 Vought F4U1 Corsair birdcage. And what an awesome kit it is. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.